Mamba is yet another sub-quadratic approach trying to compete with the transformer. And it looks very promising, and the method looks very... Uh, it's a very, very, very interesting method. RetNet was like another approach to try to compete with it. And there have been a lot of approaches to try to compete with it. Um, this one looks to be um, very promising, uh, well, according to the results as well. And uh, they also released the code so you can try it out immediately, which is very nice, um, though results may be misleading. So we'll see how this plays out, though. It does sound like um, it does look to be a very good, like a very good method that could compete with it. So what does it use? It uses something called a selective state space. And a selective state space is just a, I guess, a type of state space. So a state space is a look like it was, I think this model is used elsewhere in like physics and stuff. But uh, the paper for the model that introduced it to like machine learning was two years ago, maybe. Uh, selective state spaces is just an addition onto that. So yeah, let's go with state spaces first. So a state space is defined by two functions. It's defined by first h sub t, or um, I'll call this yeah, h sub t plus one is equal to a h sub t plus b x sub t. And then you have another equation y, which is equal to c h t h sub t plus d x sub t. Now, most of the time, this part is left out because it's basically just a skip connection. But um, these are the two equations that basically model your entire state space. Now, just defining some notation, h is the hidden state. h is going to be an rn, where n is actually the dimension. So this is your, your hidden dimension. Um, x is actually going to be a scalar. So this is modeled for scalars, not for vectors. And that means that y is also going to be uh, a scalar. So you're mapping from scalar to scalar. And you do so with this, this intermediate hidden state. Now, defining these matrices real quick, A is an n by n matrix. B is a 1 by n matrix. And C is a n by 1 matrix. Now, modeling this is just an RNN. <laughs> it looks, it's, it's just an RNN. So you basically have x sub t. This is just your scalar. Um, you have h sub t minus 1. And basically, you have your matrix A and your matrix B. So you multiply A by your hidden state, which is this is a vector of n. And you multiply B by your, your scalar. And you get out a new vector, a new hidden state, which is h sub t. And this is just a vector of size, size n. And then you can basically observe this hidden state by your matrix C, and this is a y sub t. So basically, the idea is you have this scalar, and you're mapping it to this hidden, this hidden state. And this hidden state is, in a way, uh, it's, I like to think of it as modeling some, I guess, some differential trajectory. Um, that's how I kind of am thinking about it. And this is just observing your hidden state. So some high dimensional, some high dimensional trajectory you're following along this, um, this RNN and you're observing it at that hidden state. Now, one problem with this is this is actually not how you would actually model it because you're using an RNN, you have to discretize time. So to discretize time, um, you actually use uh, you you have to discretize your a and b because h is h is what you'd be discretizing. So uh, they introduced some discretize. There's, there's a lot of different ways to do it, um, a lot of different functions. But the idea is you introduce a hat or a a bar, which is equal to f sub a of delta and a, where delta in this case would be a scalar. Uh, I think, yeah, delta is a scalar. And then b bar, which is a function of delta a and b. And th the functions are arbitrary. It looks like here they use some exponential for a and some diagonalization 
of A in some way. Um, but basically, you have to discretize. Uh, you have to discretize it in some way. And I like to think of this as your. It's basically your step size. So between these two hidden states, what is your step size in time? Um, and it can be dynamic. So you can you can change delta. That's why it's 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 um, proposed in this way. So I like to think of it kind of like this. It's not going to be. It's not going to be like this. But I like to think of it in this way, where you have um, some trajectory ht. So this may be h0. And then this is basically your update. So I guess that would be maybe delta h. So that's just your update here. Um, your update would basically just be, uh, I guess it would be itself plus, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the current state plus the, the new state. So basically, you discretize your, your new state. Um, so delta h would just be your your addition. Uh, I guess it would be bx, bx, and then you discretize it in time using delta. So um, that would be your delta, and this would kind of be bxt. Um, and yeah, you just move along that. Just it's your step size basically along along the trajectory path you're taking. That's how I kind of think about it. Of course, it's not going to be like that because you're using deep learning and a hidden state. So it does things other than that. But that's how that's how I think about this. It's some differential, and you're just taking a, you're just discretizing it by adding a step size in there because um, it's not a continuous process. Okay, right, so that's state spaces. It's just just an RNN. Now, there is a duality. So this is called the, this is just the recurrent method. Obviously, this is, this is your recurrent method. But we all know that recurrent methods are very annoying to compute. Um, they don't usually work out well. And you might imagine, um, a, so A, B, C, and D are just matrices, that this is probably not going to work too well. Um, but there's an efficient way of um, computing this because of how simple the model is. And the way you can compute this really efficiently is by using a convolution. So let me redefine, or let me define h0. So we know that h is given by this formula, and y will be given by, uh, we'll remove dxt, because um, you can just add an xt later. And they do this usually in. Um, uh, from the papers and stuff I read, they usually remove d, the d term. So h0 is basically bx0. And then h1, or y0, is equal to ch0, which is equal to, so you just pass this in, and that'll be cbx0. So this is your first state. Now your second state, h1, is equal to a h0 plus bx1. And this, if we substitute in h0, becomes a, b, x, 0 plus b, x, 1. And then you have y1, which is equal to c, h1. And you just substitute this. And you get c, a, b, x, 0 plus c, b, x, 1. All right, and then I'm just going to do this one more time. Uh, so h2 is equal to a, h1 plus bx2, and you just substitute h1, and that's a squared bx0 plus abx1 plus bx2, and then y2 becomes of ch2, and that is ca squared bx0 plus cabx1 plus cbx2. Now you can see a pattern here. Uh, basically, in uh, at your at time is equal to zero, you have this C B term, and the C B term is multiplied by x zero, and then at time step one, you basically move your C B term over one, and you add this new term here, and then for your second time step, you move C B over again, move C A B over again, and you form this um, you form this pattern, and we can model this as a kernel, so. At any step yk, we have cak bx0 plus cak 
k minus 1 b x 1 plus c a b x k minus 1 plus c b x k. And we can basically take the take this part out and we can make a kernel with that. So we'll define our kernel k or we can redefine our function. So y is going to be y, is, y sub k is equal to k sub k x zero. So k is gonna be our kernel plus k sub k minus one x one plus and so on. And you get k sub one x k. And you can model actually your entire sequence um, y. So not just y sub k, but you can model your entire sequence as a kernel k. Uh, convolved with x, where k is in RL, it's just your sequence length, and it's equal to this pattern that we saw, CB, CAB, and so on, CAL minus 1B. So this is our kernel, and basically you convolve it with our sequence x, so just x0, x1, x2, uh, so on, and this is an actual convolution, so you, you flip your kernel, um, and that's how we can model it. And this is really efficient because um, you can do the FFT and then do apply it there and then do the inverse FFT. And it's really efficient to do this. So this is a, this is a very efficient way of doing this recurrent, this recurrent method. And uh, it also has this, this nice looking property. Or if I expand it, it, it'll become apparent what it kind of um, is doing, I guess. So let me expand it a little bit. C A B X zero plus C B X one. Y two is equal to C A squared B X zero plus C A B X one plus C B X two. So yeah, this is just um, the kernel convolved with X. And it's, this kind of looks like an attention matrix. And it, I mean, it's, it's not because these are not dynamic, but we'll get there. So this is CB, uh, this is x0, x1, x2, this is x0, x1, x2. And this is CAB, this is CB, and this is CA squared B, CAB and CB. So yeah, that's what, um, our matrix looks like, and basically this is just a it's just a convolution, an efficient way of doing the the computational above. Now, there's a few things we need to add to this to actually make it good, because this model itself is actually really bad. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to make it not deal with scalars because scalars hold no information. So, we want to make it a vector. Uh, the second thing we want to do is basically make it where the weights are dynamic. Right now you just have these weights that are not dynamic, it's kind of useless. Um, but if you make it dynamic, you basically get something like the attention mechanism where you have a dynamic routing of, of, uh, of information, dynamic routing of information dependent on X. Because right now C is just dependent on, it's just the learnable weight. But if I made C dependent on some function of X, then this becomes some routing mechanism as opposed to a static multiplication that you're doing. And that's the idea, um, to make it dependent on X so that you get something similar to attention that is more efficient to compute than attention. And it's different than attention. It's just the relationship is there in some way where you have this matrix here, similar to an attention matrix where these will become learnable. So that's the idea, that's where we're going. So the, the first step is we need to convert this from 1D to ND, and it's actually pretty easy. Um, I guess it would be D, D, but um, yeah, going from 1D to ND. So our, it actually be D dimensional, uh, whatever. So N is our hidden dimension, and D is going to be our input dimension. So this becomes pretty easy. If I just take this graph here, right here, 
then the way you actually model this is you have d independent uh, cells or uh, independent computations. So your input is going to be a vector of, of size d. This will be xt. And then your output is also going to be a vector. Um, this will be yt. And this is of size d. Now, you may think that you would use this and there would be some type of relational, um, like this would be some type of relational algorithm dependent on d. But actually, interestingly, it, it doesn't do that. So if I, uh, basically what you do is you send it one at a time through this, this um, through, 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 your, through your model. You basically send it one, cell, one scalar at a time. So yeah, you, you, you take this first cell here, or this, this first scalar here, and you send it through the model, and it'll give you a hidden state. Um, it'll update the hidden state for that. So I guess this would be uh, the hidden state at D. And then it will output a, a scalar here. So, uh, and then you do that with the second scalar. So you take the second scalar, you send it through, it gives its hidden state, and then it outputs a hidden, or then it outputs a scalar, and you get your next um, scalar. And that's how you, that's how, that's how they model it. They model it scalar-wise. So you, you just send it through scalars by scalar, um, and you can do this in parallel. It's just easier to visualize, um, I think, scalar by scalar. And uh, there are no relationships depending on the scalars. So this model here does not. It's just. It's basically just doing d number of uh, d number of inputs in parallel, but they don't have relationships between each other. Uh, they mention that here, um, right here. Change my highlighter. So they mention that the SSM is applied independently to each channel. So that's an important note to make. This model does not do vector relationships. It's just an SSM applied basically for descalers. Um, and then they have uh, their algorithm down here. So if you try to work out the shapes over here, it doesn't work out if you do this with um, if you do this with uh, like relationships depending on d. It only works out if you do this with um. If you do this, if if they're independent from each other, and you can do that with like one D convolutions, so um, yeah, that's how they parallelize it here. So it's just D, and um, yeah, I mean that's that's just making that's just adding dimensionality. Real quick, as a sanity check, um, I want to write out the shapes for how you compute this uh, because I found it very confusing when I was looking through the code. Because uh, it's not it's not the same as the initial. It's the same as the initial representation. It's just uh, you apply independently. So x and y are going to be uh, in dimension d, and h sub t is going to be a. It'll be a d by n matrix, and then a will be a n by n matrix. Now they say this is d by n. Uh, I don't know why they say it represents a structured n by n matrix. Uh, I'm guessing they project this in some way to n by n. I couldn't find it in their code. There was a lot of disgusting CUDA code, but this it has to be an n by n to work out. Um, so I'll call this an n by n matrix. Uh, and they say it, it represents an n by n matrix. So I'm guessing it is n by n under the hood. It's just d by n here. Uh, B is going to be a D by N matrix, and we'll call this B bar. So it's already discretized. And then C is going to be a, uh, it's a vector of N. So that means that H sub T is equal to A bar H sub T minus one plus B bar X sub T. And if we write out the shapes, basically this is an N by N computation and you multiply this n times. So don't worry. So you multiply this n times, or you multiply it in dimension n, and you do it d times. 
So you do this computation for all d independently. And if you do this for all d independently, you get out a shape that is uh, d by n. So you do this d times um, for each d. So d is not dependent on d is not d does not have any uh, relationships. And then for b, you get uh, n by one times one, and you do this uh, d times, uh, and you basically get a different b each time. And you can do this like with a with a group convolution. So this basically outputs n, and you do this d times for all parts of your input, uh, for all yeah, all parts of your input, and you get a d by n. You d you get d hidden states, and you can add these together, and you get a hidden state which is d by n. So this becomes it's d hidden states. So it's in R n, and you have d of those, which is it's different than dn because that would uh, that would mean that you would have relationships between those param or those values and y sub t is equal to cht which is in rd and basically uh, your c c is n so this is n by n and you do that d times and you get out uh, so this gives you a scalar and you do that d times uh, which gives you your output d so it's all independent all these channels work independently, which is, it's, it's weird to me that, that that's done, but that is what's done. It feels like if there was some dependency between D, it may make it better. I'm not sure. That's, that's just what's done. Um, so yeah, SSM, each, each channel applied independently, each part of D independently. I just thought that was, that was an important note to show off. Now, if you think of this as our attention mechanism, this is going to be our routing mechanism, once we make the weights dynamic, the way I think about this is D is actually your number of heads. So this is this is your number of heads. And that's how I think about this. So if you, if you look at the attention mechanism, each head is sent independently through the attention mechanism. In this way, each scalar is going to be sent independently through the SSM mechanism. Okay. So now we have this in D dimension. We have this in a higher dimension. Now, what we want is we want to make this dynamic. So they make it dynamic here. Uh, they basically make some matrices learnable. Uh, that's the idea. Learnable based or not learnable. Uh, learnable dependent on x. So it's a function of x rather than just a static learnable matrix. So we basically have this x here. Uh, I'm just going to draw out the picture because uh, they define S B and S C and S delta. So you actually learn the step size, which is which is cool. So you have X, which is an L by E matrix. So E is going to be a projection. Um, I'll just call this uh, D instead. So you basically project this to three matrices. So X B now becomes dependent on X. So this will be an L by D matrix. And then you project this to delta. So delta is also dependent on X. And this will be delta T, which may be equal to one. So maybe it's a scalar. And then this will also be dependent on X. So this will be C. And this will be an L by D matrix. Um, now, if you look here, they have uh, the definitions for the projections. This is S sub B, this is S sub delta, and this is S sub C. So S sub B is just a linear projection of uh, X. S sub C is just a linear projection of X. And S sub delta is a linear projection, and then you broadcast it. So it's in a way, it's like two linear projections. And then there's a soft plus, soft plus operator. Um, on top of that. So that's that. So basically making these three matrices learnable. Now you also have the A matrix, which is uh, it's static. So it's a parameter. And this is uh, L by D. And you also have your D matrix here if we want to use that, which is L by D as well. So B, delta, and C are learnable. 
Now, whenever you're combining these, whenever you, so uh, this is A, this is A and B, not A and B discretized. Whenever you discretize them, remember uh, that this is a function of delta and A. So A becomes basically learnable, or A bar. And when you discretize it, so you send information from delta and you send information from A like that. Um, oh, I forgot, uh, this is actually projected delta L by D. So this is projected to D or rather repeated D times. Um, and just, just for, uh, I'll put the values out here. So L may be like 64 and D may be like 16 or 32. So delta is sent over here to A to discretize A. And now A is dependent on X. A is now a function of X. And this is just uh, L by, and you, you repeat this a lot. So uh, this matrix now becomes, so you have L of these and you have a, you basically have a discretized matrix for um, each part of your, your sequence. So this becomes D by N, where N is your hidden state dimensionality and D is your, uh, that's, that's your input number of channels. That's basically your number of heads and this is your sequence length. So yeah, that's A. And remember that um, A before was just a D by N matrix. So we basically have a different A bar for each part of the sequence length. So it's different depending, it's not invariant. It's not invariant on the sequence length. It's, um, it, the, the sequence, the, whatever part of the, the sequence you're at does matter. So um, yeah, basically you just have a, an A bar for every part of your sequence and you do the same for B. So you compute B and you basically get out L B bars and these are gonna be N by D matrices. So yeah, and this is done by uh, your, your other function, your function of A, that's getting messy your function of A, delta, and B. Basically compute the, uh, then you make the discretized matrix B, which is a function of X. So we now have our two matrices A and B, which are functions of X. And you have your C and D matrices as well, um, which are, C is a function of X and D is just there. <laughs> D is always just there. Um, you could probably make this a function of X if you really wanted to. Uh, now you just send this through your SSM. Uh, I'm going to move this down. Yeah, so you just send this through your SSM uh, function, which is what we defined earlier up here, uh, just, just your normal SSM. But instead of A being static and B being static, you do you have a different A and B for each part of your sequence. So this is sent through the SSM, this is sent through the SSM, uh, delta is not because you already discretized A and B, C is sent and D is sent. And you basically get out your Y at every time step, which is going to be equal to, and it's, it's an L by D matrix. So that's the idea. Basically you make these learnable and yeah, it becomes a dynamic routing mechanism. And they mention that this is a time invariant recurrence or convolution. And they mentioned this, it's a time varying because you have L um, A bars and you have to use this recurrence scan method. So a problem with this is you can't just, you can't use this convolution method because the convolution method assumed that this was at a time invariant, but there's time varying now. So you can't use this method. They do some crazy hardware tricks to get around this. So, uh, so this is basically the model here. Um, this is the attention model. So just think of this as a replacement for, think of it as a replacement for attention where D is the number of heads in, in a way. In a way, this is a replacement for attention. Uh, so they say here, uh, here, this is the selective scan hardware state expansion. So I think whenever they say a scan, I think that's just the recurrent operation in 
uh, except you don't store the hidden states. So you just do this recurrence operation and you throw away the hidden states until you actually need to, until you need them and you recompute them as needed. Um, so they mention here that uh, instead of, so they have this scan thing. So the main idea is to leverage properties of modern accelerators to materialize the state H only more uh, efficient levels of in in efficient levels of the memory hierarchy. So in particular, most operations are bounded by memory bandwidth. And uh, this includes our scan operation and we use a kernel fusion to reduce the amount of memory IAOs leading to a significant speed up compared to standard implementation. So they do some cool hardware stuff. Uh, here they say concretely, instead of preparing the scan of size bet and the GPU HBM memory, they load the SSM parameters. So they, they load these parameters and instead of pre-computing the A bars directly from slow HBM to fast SRAM. So you're doing all the compute, you're doing all the big computations on SRAM and you perform the discretization and recurrence on SRAM and then write the final outputs back to um, high, high bandwidth memory. Um, so that's how they do that. Uh, I don't want to look at the CUDA code for how they did that, that's all they mention here. Um, basically, it was an efficient way of computing this. Uh, and then they say, uh, finally, we must avoid saving the intermediate states, which are necessary for backprop. We carefully apply the classical technique of recomputing, of recomputation to reduce the memory requirements. The intermediate states are not stored, but recomputed in the backward process when the inputs are loaded from HBM to SRAM. As a result, the fused selective scan has the same memory requirements as an optimized transformer implementation with flash attention. So they, they throw away every hidden state and they recompute it on the backward process. Um, that's how they speed it up. Um, if you want to look at their CUDA code, go ahead. I, I am not. <laughs> uh, finally, we get to the basically the, the, the block, the block that we're going to use, the Mamba block. So we have this SSM here, and they add a few more pieces to it. So, like I said, this can be thought of as the it's the attention quote attention mechanism, the dynamic routing mechanism. Now, basically, you have your x here. Your x is going to be of shape um, l by d, and you just project this. So you project this up. Um, maybe you have d is equal to sixteen, and you project it up to e is equal to say thirty two. So you just do these two projections. And this is using, this was the Hungry Hungry Hippos uh, paper, and this was the gated MLP. Uh, they kind of combine them together. So the Hungry Hungry Hippos paper, uh, I'm going <laughs> to stop saying that, the H3 paper, use this convolution here. It basically shift the values uh, using this matrix here. It, sh it shifted them. Uh, interestingly, this is not a shift matrix. That hungry that H three used. This is a le learnable causal convolution, uh, causal in the sense that L only uh, only gets information from L, or like the, the causal matrix, like the causal attention matrix. Basically, you just remove this top part here, where the first token only has information from itself. The first two have information from, or channel have information from. Uh, themselves and the first three have information from themselves. You don't look ahead. So this is just some learnable causal convolution. Um, I think this is just to, I guess, mix up the sequence length uh, in some way. Or rather do a like static routing of information um, just to, to get information flowing between uh, tokens or your, your L part of the sequence. Uh, and then you have some nonlinearity they say they use silu or swish. And then they do the SSM mechanism. So this is your dynamic routing of information here. And yeah, you they also have a nonlinearity here. And then they multiply it. So this is kind of like a a skip connection in a way. Uh, they use it's some gated MLP thing, and this is just some like element-wise multiplication between your SSM and your your SSM route and your, your skip connection path. And then you down project this uh, to back to dimension D. And this is your, your Mamba block. 
Uh, so yeah, your SSM is right here. And the SSM is just the method we talked about earlier. It's just this one, with the, the dynamic routing that they, they propose with their crazy scan, their crazy hardware scan. Um, yeah, so that's the architecture. This is it right here. And yeah, they have code available if you want to try it out. Um, and yeah, let's just get to the results. So, oh, right, yeah, there are some cool interpretations they had here. Let me go through those. Uh, so yeah, the interpretation of Delta. In general, Delta controls the balance between how much to focus or ignore the current input, XT. It generalizes RNN gates. Uh, mechanically, a large delta resets the state H and focuses on the current input X, while a small delta persists the state and ignores the current input. So SSMs can be interpreted as a continuous system with uh, that's discretized by time step delta. And in this context, the intuition is that a large delta represents the system focusing on the current input for longer, thus selecting it and forgetting its current state while a small delta represents a tra transient input that is ignored. So basically, this is like a, a gating mechanism, your delta, um, which is your step size. Interpretation of BNC. In an SSM, modifying BNC to be selective allows finer grain control over whether to let an input x into the state, uh, into state h, or the state uh, into the output yt. So yeah, obviously, it's dynamic. And then they also mentioned, this was kind of cool, or this is kind of a cool thing that they mentioned. Um, most prior SSMs use complex numbers in their state, um, which is necessary for strong performance on many tasks. However, it has become empirically observed that completely real valued SSMs seem to work fine and possibly even better in some settings. I usually throwing complex numbers at something makes it better because there's more it's like it's a larger space. There's more. It's it's a lot easier to work in a larger space. But uh, and they they also have nice properties, complex numbers. But I guess uh, it doesn't matter for SSMs, and I guess it can even hurt performance. Uh, yeah, the, the, those those are a few of the the things that they mentioned that I thought were kind of kind of cool. Now they have uh, some ab ablations and stuff that we need to go into to see how well it works. One of the most important things that attention can do is since it's just this fully connected graph, it can do what's called selective copying. Uh, they have a image somewhere over here, right, right here. So there's like three tasks. There's the copying task, um, which is very simple. And there's selective copying task, where it basically needs to copy a select token from the input to the output. And then uh, like this is dependent on time and it requires context reasoning. And then there's an induction head, which basically answers something based off the context it's giving. And this also requires you to like pick out a token or multiple tokens and kind of reason about it, reasoning quotes. And they mention here that like this is one of the most they, they, you do this a lot for recurrent modules, and the SSM can easily solve this task by only keeping track of time instead of reasoning about the data. Um, so they mentioned that it's a pretty easy task for it, and Mamba does it almost perfectly, which is good to see that Mamba can do this. Now, induction head is more interesting. Uh, basically, it requires the model to perform associate recall and copy. For example, if the model has seen a bigram such as Harry Potter, in the sequence, then the next time Harry appears in the same sequence, the model should be able to predict Potter by copying from history. Um, they say they train a two, yeah, a, a two-layer model on the adduction head task with sequence length 256 and a vocab size of 16. So it's a very small model, and they show that uh, it that the selective SSM layer has the ability to solve the task perfectly because of its ability to select. Uh, to selectively remember the relevant token while ignoring everything else in between. So it can do this, which is a nice property. Like th these were two of the tests that they proposed to see if it actually works well. Um, yeah, Mamba gets high accuracy. 
and it doesn't matter what the sequence length is. As the sequence length grows, it does 100% accuracy. <laughs> I think it's more like 99, but it does really well. So scaling laws, uh, basically uh, Mamba is purple and Transformer++ plus plus is orange and they're almost exactly the same. So this axis here is perplexity. And this is your flops. So as your model size increases, you would expect the perplexity to go down and it does. And uh, in fact, with a larger model uh, or with, with a longer sequence length, the uh, Mamba actually does better than Transformer++, plus plus, just slightly. It's probably not significantly different, but it does a little bit better. Uh, and they say Mamba is the first attention-free model to match the performance of a very strong transformer recipe that has now become the standard, particularly as the sequence, le sequence length grows. So it may even get better as the sequence length grows. And then they have a lot of um, ablations here, and basically it wins every time compared to things like Pythia or RWKV. Uh, some of these other, that this is not an attention model, but other attention-based models like Pythia um, or GPT, it does, it performs equally or better um, in, I think in every case it performs better. Uh, they only scale it up to 2.8 billion parameters. Uh, they do not go above that. So we don't know how good it does at really large scale. We only know how good it does at Mediocrely large, so we, we know it can scale. We just don't know how well it, it scales. Uh, does it die at some point? We don't know. Someone will have to scale that to figure it out. And they have some more results, but um, yeah, scan. So scan versus convolution versus attention. So the scan, that's their their method that they do in with a CUDA kernel. It does the best out of all them. So as the sequence length grows, the time is also going to grow. Uh, as you can see, this is quadratic. Uh, this one is more, it's 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 a, it's a log, uh, I think. So yeah, and then inference throughput on an A100, uh, it's very low for Mamba. It's also very low for a transformer, uh, but it's pretty low. So Mamba 6.9, Transformer 6.7. This is the throughput, and this is the bat size. Oh, <laughs> it's throughput, not, not inference time, so throughput. And you can see it's pretty comparable. The throughput's actually, it gets higher as the sequence length grows, as you would expect, uh, because it's subquadratic. Um, yeah, Mamba throughput is crazy high. That's good, and yeah, they also showed here that real and complex are very comparable, and their S, the, their models X6, uh, or they use S6, and it, the perplexity is a lot lower, and they also mentioned that learning delta is the most important parameter, um, and that may be because it's used in both B and C, or used in both A and B, and it's it's basically a dynamic step size, and I would imagine that would be very beneficial. Uh, yeah, selective, uh, right here, selective delta, and yeah, another real complex comparison. Um, yeah, those are all the ablations and stuff I wanted to go over, and yeah, that's that's Mamba. Uh, really cool paper. I am really excited to see how this this works. I think it I think it shows a lot of promise. Um, we'll see. Uh, only time can tell if this will be the next model that competes with the Transformer.